We all love this. I scream, you scream, we all scream for flat shoes. Laptop in hand means only one thing. Today's video is going to be shopping my closet for spring 2024 trends. I am looking at who, what, where. I love them. I think they're great. Good content always. The title of the article that I am using to shop my closet for spring 2024 trends is called The Only Spring Summer 24 Fashion Trends I'm Bothered About. I'm going to link the article for you in the description box below. I have not looked at what these trends are, so all of this is going to be very off the cuff as usual. If you like the idea of shopping for spring summer trends, then definitely grab a ticket to my live virtual shop your closet. We're going to be breaking down spring summer 2024 trends into elements of style. I'm going to also give sort of my take on trends and which ones are like the wearable ones and the more slow fashion ones, as well as just helping you train the eye to see fashion in elements of style so that you can start using your clothes more as tools of expression and not just like a closet full of stuff that you don't wear and that you're not satisfied with. It's really fun. Two hours. It's very interactive. We have guests whose closets we shop so that you're not always looking at my stuff. And we have a really, really good discussion and there's tons of outfit inspo because everybody gets to submit their own look. It's really fun. I hope you can join me. It's always, always good when it's a trend session because it really helps us change the way we see all of the newness coming out. I find the change of season is when we are often feeling a bit more spendy and always good practice to shop your closet. So I'll leave details and ticket info in the description box below, but let's get into it. Oh, trend number one, extraordinary every day. This is about elevating the essential items in our daily wardrobes to new heights of exceptional design and style. So they're talking about like these classic items like denim, blazers, button ups, but perhaps with a little bit of an elevated twist. I think this is really good because this is a nice general trend that I think can be echoed via the styling. I don't think you need to have these specific pieces. I think you can elevate a lot of these basic pieces just by pairing them with other elevated items in your closet. Like even if you've got a pair of baggy denim, like which they're referencing, then you pair it with a nice blazer. I would just do something like take, you know, they've got like a wrap button up, but I don't think you need to buy a wrap button up to participate in this trend. I think if you have a button up, if you're not a button up person, maybe it's a blouse, maybe it's a cardigan. Can you give it a wrap twist or something like that? Or can you maybe take a blazer and like belt it and make it feel a little bit more sophisticated? Or if you don't want to belt it, can you take like a cool brooch? That's what I would do there. And me personally, I would pair this with denim. I love that trend. Fantastic. The sky's the limit. Oh, this beautiful powdery sky blue. I think color trends are really difficult because if this isn't a color that speaks to you or that you resonate with, I mean, you can just skip it all together. Like, I think that's wildly unfair to expect people to hop on board a color trend. Color is so, so personal. Sky blue does happen to be one of my personal favorites because I, I think I look good in sky blue and it makes me happy. <gasps> I also have this. I thrifted this Louis Joe super slinky, very 90s vintage dress. Breath of fresh air offers a much needed dose of serenity. Fully on board with that. Fresh and calm injects a youthful edge. So they're not just talking about pops of sky blue, they're talking about like head to toe sky blue. In which case this could be kind of interesting. Better than joggers. Many pairs of perfectly cut trousers in the spring summer 2024 collection. So here, I guess they're saying like these beautiful languid sort of flowy wide leg trousers looking very elegant, more relaxed, drawstring waist styles. Fluidity is key. It's really not just about a tailored trouser because they're making this link to joggers and talking about trousers being a counterpoint to the jogger. I have these elastic waist wide leg trousers. These are fantastic. And to be completely honest, for me, they do replace place joggers. These are like my travel pants now. I wear them on the plane because they're kind of indestructible. They've got a nice elastic waist. They've got that nice
nice languid flow. I can wear them high-waisted or low-waisted. They've got a nice front seam. You know, it doesn't feel overly stuffy or tailored. So they've got them styled either with these like sheer mesh kind of tops, which I think is really beautiful, or with a more sort of equally languid or loosey, super casual top. Distilled 90s. 90s directive when it came to minimalism, logo vests, low slung trousers, tube dresses as hero items. But now things have been pared back even further. Grown up take on plain outfit ideas. They're saying this clean cut aesthetic is being referenced for 2024. So I feel like, I mean, that Louis Jo Maxi dress is kind of pared back 90s. They've got a lot of like single breasted blazers, a lot of like kind of Carolyn Bassett Kennedy silhouettes and, and looks here. I like that also that they're using this kind of slip dress slinkiness. I would actually be interested because I haven't styled my slip skirt in a long time. This feels very like this pared back 90s. And so this is what's really cool is you can kind of pick up on whatever elements you like. And this is something that we talk a lot about in our live shop, your closets with our guests is we really get them to pinpoint the elements of style that they like from our inspiration look because we're not about carbon copying, right? Even when we're looking at these runway images, it's not about carbon copying the runway image or being like, oh, I need to have this to be on trend. What I'm picking up from these looks is this really beautiful slinky texture and slinky silhouette. So that's my reference from this. Feeling flat. Flat shoes continue to dominate. This is exactly what we're saying, especially in sheer Mary Jane and ballet styles. So I think if you have any kind of ballet flat, so the square toe and the mesh is really big this season. I do not have either of those. In fact, I have like the opposite. My ballet flats are pointed, but they do happen to be sky blue. I would just style those with like a pair of straight leg or loose jeans, maybe even with a wide leg. I don't know if those can handle the heft of a wide leg. I don't think so, but I'm gonna test that out. But I'm just, I would wear those with just sort of like my regular outfit uniform, button up, pair of jeans, call it a day, or maybe like a little bit of light knitwear. Modern romantics. I love these ones. I love the ones that are a little bit more general because it really allows you to flex your styling creativity. Here they're talking about a retelling of the romantic narrative that, you know, comes up every spring, but here it comes with an edge. Gowns, but there are fresh silhouettes and garment combinations. Chiffani pastels, frills, and bows into your everyday wardrobes. Wearability is a big thing, but it doesn't have to be boring. All it takes is layering a flash of pink and lace under a trench coat, adding a bow to a kitten heel, or pairing pearl earrings with a monochromatic outfit. I really like this again, how they're they're really not, you know, honing in on the specific garment, but they're, they're honing in on different ways you can style this. I have this blouse, which is very feminine, that I found secondhand in Croatia, but I also have this one from Cezanne. I don't know, this one I've been debating letting go. Definitely this I would. This feels more me than this. Latte dressing. I love clothing that references food. Beige used to be a dirty word, but now it is the main character in the quiet luxury aesthetic. They're comparing this to like, if you want like an alternative, a more muted or understated option to pink, you can get it with a hue or saturation or even undertone that works for all skin types. This is again one of those things where like if this color doesn't appeal to you then like just skip it all together you know or if you really do like it and want to incorporate it but you don't like it on you this color as an accessory like a handbag or like even just a scarf or a hat. Oh you know what can we make this a suit? These are a pair of secondhand Everlane trousers wide leg that my wonderful podcast co-host Christina gave me. You know, I this could be interesting. I'm gonna try these two together or we'll just try some separates. I think you can really try and go like full monochrome if you want. With the color trends recently and even in the past couple seasons, my interpretation of them is that they're really being worn head to toe, which I think makes them a lot more visually impactful. And as we know, like one of the tenets of quiet luxury dressing is this kind of monochrome look. The great drape 
Ooh, this one's gonna be a bit more difficult. Oh, maybe not. Comfort is more than a trend, it's a state of mind. Relaxed vibes. They're saying exploration of drapery is the key. Artfully draped, ruched, pleated fabrics, Grecian goddess. Do I have a scarf that I could turn into a sarong that I could like be drapey with? Drapey isn't really my gem. I'm like a very big tailored separates person. I like things that are like more than a gym bag. Fashion likes to work in extremes. Typically, you have the overtly oversized and the impossibly teeny tiny, everything in between. Blah. Here they're talking about oversized totes, weekenders, mesh shopping bags. Okay, so they're talking about like Tibby in the row having these giant bags. I mean, look. For me, I would just do my convertible backpack, but like in the tote version. It's nice and slinky, slouchy. I can carry it on my shoulder. But you wanna know what else works? Just as well, actual tote bags. I mean, we're talking about luxury, so the ones in our inspiration are these like giant clutch bags that are just soft. What I'm picking up here is more the slouchiness, this giant oversized slouchiness. I think you get a little bit of slouch from this, you know? I think it's fine. New power pairing. Trousers have been significant, yes. All signs point to the fact that skirts are well and truly back for spring, summer. You know what I like about the skirts here is that they are all different silhouettes. We're seeing a low slung pencil, sort of these like low slung midi peasant skirts, a mid rise pencil. We're not just seeing the pencil, we're seeing these sort of like more open and flowy skirts. Styling, they're talking about how we saw skirts paired with simple t-shirts and vest to bikini style tops, but the most elegant way to wear your skirts right now is with a blouse. So we're really talking about, again, this whole like elevated dressing, which seems to be, I would say, like an overall like umbrella overarching trend through many of these that we've seen, this kind of elevated or understated elegance. This is a very easy one to replicate if you've got in your closet. Like I said, we saw like a lot of the mid-waist, whether it was a pencil skirt or something with a bit more flow to it. Funny how they didn't talk about the mini. I love the mini hemline. If anything, I would do a blouse with a mini. I would, I would do this. I would do like maybe the pink mini with the silk blouse, maybe, if we wanna have like a little Mew Mew moment. We'll see. So that is what I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Always fun to do this shop your closet for trends. Let me know what trends you will be shopping your closet for this season in the comments below. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it or if you learned something new, hit subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget I've got tickets to my live virtual shop your closet event. I would love to see you there. Everything is in the description box below. Thank you, thank you so much for being here. It always means the world and I will see you in the next slow fashion video. Ciao.